Welcome to Mental Health Mondays with Reset Brain and Body. I am Carrie Biscolonis, founder of Reset, and today I want to talk to you for International Women's Day about the top 10 lessons that I think every woman needs to know. And I would love to get your feedback and hear also from you, what are some of those 10 lessons or top lessons that you've learned throughout your life that you really need to always remember and you would encourage any other woman to remember and really live her life by. And so these are lessons that I myself have learned or have learned by working with women for the last, gosh, 15 years. Uh, in both this profession and my profession previously in human resources and wellness. So the first lesson, which I think is so relevant in the age of social media and Pinterest, is that comparison is the thief of joy. Many of you have probably heard that quote before, but it is such a profound lesson that we always need to remember in times when we're triggered by that not enough gremlin. So comparison is the thief of joy. So not only comparing you against other people, but you against yourself, right? You against yourself five years ago or five minutes ago, that comparison is the thief of joy. It so quickly robs you of what you have in this moment. It robs you of your gratitude and it is something that can just be so detrimental to our own self-confidence. So Lesson number one. Lesson number two, no is a complete sentence. I myself really struggled with that whole year of yes philosophy because I believe that no is an incredibly powerful word and one that we don't use enough and don't use enough as a complete sentence. And so how often do we find ourselves over explaining why we don't wanna do something, can't do something, aren't available, um, I know that this doesn't always apply to your children, <laughs> but specifically when people are asking of things of you, that no is a complete sentence. You do not have to over explain or provide excuses or apologies. On the flip side of this, lesson number three is that if it's not a hell yes, it's a no. And this one's really important for when we're making decisions. And I truly believe that you need to have a full body yes. I mean, truly tuning into your intuition, feeling that gut instinct before you commit to something or follow through on something. I think everyone or a lot of people have an example of when they found their home, apartment, condo, and they just knew right away. Or maybe when you found your partner, you just knew right right away. And that's that feeling, right? If it's not a hell yes, it's a no. And I think so often we stretch ourselves so thin because we commit to things that aren't a hell yes, but it's based off of a should or a story. And it's really important to, again, tune in with that. Is this a full body hell yes? Well, if not, it's a no. And that's how we practice better boundaries with what we're committing ourselves to, with who we're saying yes to, and what things we might be over-involving ourselves or our children in. All right, this is a really, I love this one because it is totally reshaped how I communicate. And it's, I'm not saying sorry for the delay anymore when I don't reply to someone right, right away in email or text messages. Instead, I say, thank you for your patience because I'm not sorry and I'm sick of saying sorry too much. And this is lesson number four. Stop saying sorry all the time. Stop apologizing. Using things like thank you for your patience. Thank you for listening. Those are things that we should be using that are more empowering words versus sorry. Sorry for talking too much. Sorry for taking up your time. Sorry for not being responsive. Sorry for missing. No. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your listening. Practicing more empathy with ourselves is really important so that we can transfer over to how we want other people to perceive us and be more confident and be more empowered. All right, lesson number five is... Okay, this one is heavy and it's something that I hold near and dear to my heart and I'm continuing to learn from, but it's that uh, diet culture is a menace, truly a menace. And diet culture is massive and there's so much that women have been 
almost manipulated into thinking about themselves because of diet culture. Uh, the wellness industry really preys on women's own insecurities that have been derived and exacerbated because of diet culture. And if you are unfamiliar with diet culture, I strongly recommend you reading the book Anti-Diet by Christy Harrison or listening to any podcast about diet culture. But freeing yourself from diet culture will free up so much brain space and allow you to get on that pathway of more confidence and empowerment. And these are things like um, calling out the mantra of, you know, I run for pizza, right? It's like, no, 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 you don't have to run in order to earn food. If you're going out to dinner some night, you don't have to exercise in order to be able to go out to dinner. It's the fact that diets don't work. You don't have to shrink your body in order to feel worthy. So diet culture is a menace. Rid yourself of diet culture. Empower yourself to be beyond diet culture is lesson number five. And if this is foreign to you, dig in, ask some questions. Lesson number six, you do not have to lean in. You do not have to lean in. In fact, where can you lean out? I understand that as we are pursuing our careers as feminists, we want to be taken seriously. We want to give ourselves an opportunity to say no. But with that, we put so much pressure on ourselves to truly do everything, have everything, be everything. And women are already carrying so much of the mental load of running the household, caring for the children and careers. So really check with that pressure of leaning in and what is that about? And truly, can you look at your life and say, actually, I can lean out <laughs> in a lot of areas. I actually don't need to work twice as hard as my male counterpart because I need the system to change. And I'm not gonna allow the system to change if I continually lean in. So look where you don't have to lean in and can instead lean out to create a little bit more systemic change and relieve the pressure you put on yourself. Lesson number seven, stop shooting on yourself. Stop shooting on yourself. This again is with this idea of um, all the things that you have to do and all the things that you need to be and really allowing yourself to just eliminate the shoulds. I should do more, I should do that, I should have done that, I should do that for my kids, I should do that for my husband, I should stop shooting on yourself and really catching yourself when you're in that frame of mind of shooting on yourself. Because a lot of times this comes along with the idea that we have to be perfect or we have to be good, we have to be a particular version of ourselves to fit into what other people expect of us. And no one is perfect, no one has it all together, no one has all the answers. Remind yourself of that. So stop shooting on yourself. Lesson number eight, trust yourself. I think so many women in particular look outside for the answers, outside of themselves. They look to their friends, their mom, their husband, uh, a magazine, an influencer. I mean, where do you think influencers came from? <laughs> because we are easily influenced, but you have to trust yourself and you have to figure out how you're able to connect to yourself. How do you know when you're aligned? What are the things that support that alignment so that making decisions is that much easier? So you can trust your gut or your own intuition and you know what that sounds like. Learn how to trust yourself. It'll help you make better decisions. It'll help you more, be more at peace and more confident. Lesson number nine know your stuff and this is not know everything about the world know your stuff that you need to work on it's really important to not have blind spots of what is our like our our fears our shame our growing edges our places where we have opportunity to heal and transform and just be a more <laughs> well-adjusted human a lot of times we avoid going deep in order to even know what that stuff is and we have to peel back the layers. It's really important because it makes us better partners, 
better people for ourselves, better people for our children, is to know our stuff and know what we have to work on. And if this is something that you need help with, because Brene Brown books is not gonna be enough to like truly navigate, like what is my unique shame and fear and obstacles and stuff, then work with a therapist, start journaling, start meditating, really develop that introspection that's imperative to understanding what your stuff is so that you don't pass it on to the next generation. Know your stuff and then admit that you need help working on it. And lesson number 10, you cannot take care of others unless you take care of yourself. I say this to myself every single morning, I must take care of myself before I can take care of other people. Otherwise I am resentful and I am bitter and I have no capacity to handle the things that come up or I have very little capacity, which means that so many of the fires that inevitably come up throughout the day throw me off and I end up being reactive. So I must take care of myself first. And this can look very different for every single person. It could be five minutes of drinking tea. It could be sleeping in. It could be staying up late. Whatever it is that feels like you're taking care of yourself, implement that. Make it sacred time for yourself. So these are the top 10 lessons that I have learned uh, either through my clients, the experiences that they have had or my own. And I would love to hear what are some lessons that I've missing. I think that there are way more than 10, <laughs> but these are some of the basics that I believe every woman should know. Uh, the other thing that I want you all to know about, and this is our special announcement, is that we are going to start changing up the format of Mental Health Mondays in which I'm going to empower each of you to come to me with questions. So rather than me being the one that sets the topic for each week, I'm going to use your questions and your feedback to guide the topics. And so every Monday you have the opportunity on Detroit Moms to go in and submit a question and that I will then address a week later. So please, please, please send in your questions. Let's talk about all the stuff that's on your mind. Nothing, nothing, nothing is off limits. And I am really looking forward to serving you in a more robust way. Thank you so much. Happy International Women's Day.